Reddit, what is the most over-engineered piece of technology you have ever seen heard of? I attended a presentation revealing a space-saving cup holder that could hold pretty much any beverage container and fold it out from a unit about the size of an audio cassette. Only thing is it had about 80 individual moving parts and the manufacturing costs would have been stupid. Had one of these in my 2001 Audi A4. The thing broke. Shocking and it was almost always stuck in the console and unusable, but every few months I would get in the car and it would have popped itself back out, and I finally had a cup holder again. Then within a couple days, without fail, one of my friends would get in the car and go oh what's this and push it back in. I once had a bike lock, combination dial type, that had a small digital clock in the dial. The battery died after a year. It wasn't over engineered per se, but it was such a ridiculous addition to a product. The cup holder in the center console of a 2005 Land Rover Sport. You push down on panel in the console and an assembly pops up, then if I remember correctly you unfold the assembly once and maybe another time. Over engineered like the rest of the vehicle. A roasting stick for when you go camping, right? Except when you push a button on the handle, the end spins so you don't have to spin the whole thing like a normal human being. Yo that's not over designed that's for people hi f. I used to make ups. The packaging machines are so finicky that even the slightest change will cause catastrophic failure. I bought a reusable cup I actually like it a lot. I've been using the same one for over a year. As long as you rinse it after every use, it stays in good shape. All the benefits of cup, but a tiny fraction of the price, and a tiny fraction of the plastic waste. The air gun designs automag. Each piece was made out of steel when aluminum would have been lighter and cheaper. Each piece was machined down to 0.001 inches when a far looser tolerance would still work. The valve was designed to accept 3000C when 800C was all that was necessary. It is also the only paintball marker in the world that, when aired up, can be cleaned by submersing it completely in water. Juicero. $120 million to develop a juicer that costs $400 and needs juice cartridges that cost $7 each, but you can just squeeze the $7 juice cartridges by hand. Absolute madness. They originally cost $700 and they had to lower the price. Did anyone mention that the juice cartridges were only available on a subscription service where you got a package every week? Any appliance with the smart preface. I know they talk to the internet of things and all that bulls but do I really need a toaster that communicates with the outside world? I don't want to pay for therapy for my panini press when it gets cyberbullied bullied on Twitter. My first car was a 93 Sonata that my parents, neither of whom are remotely car savvy, purchased at auction and sold to me. It had power seat belts. Like most of the other, many, power functions in that car, they did not work all that well and eventually stopped working altogether. In the retracted position, naturally, hated that ugly, contentious piece of crap. Power seat belts are such an awkward thing. The only reason they exist is because regulations demanded either those or airbags in the 90s. So budget cars had power seat belts because they were cheaper. As a rule I think household appliances that have been constantly upgraded in a technological battle between companies. So men have added price increasing features that you just don't need. For example, there's these fridges with computers on. Now, as much as I love the idea of turning up to the office with my fridge to begin a day's work, that feature just seems pointless. I was walking through a big home store that sold appliances with my toddler in the cart. We rolled by a fridge with a touchscreen TV in the door. The little guy said look, daddy, that TV has a fridge. A company called VNTANA produces hologram devices. Basically just a transparent, reflective piece of plastic that reflects from a monitor overhead. That part's pretty simple. The housing frame itself, it's an emo, overly engineered monster and I love it. Comma Flutterwood, those GPS shoes that tell you where to go by vibrating. I still don't get if they were made for blind people or not, and if not, why they exist at all. I actually like this idea, I don't think I'd ever use them, but I can see it being useful to someone in a big city who walks or bikes places. Panzerkampfwagen 7 Koenigsteiger, Tiger 2. This was an incredibly over-designed tank. 
It had incredibly thick frontal armor and decent side armor. It had a gun that could punch right through nearly every enemy tank it would face at distances of 2 kms. It had great suspensions and a powerful engine. Its only real fault was its transmission that was really prone to failing utterly. It was designed as a technological masterpiece when Germany had neither the time or resources to mass produce this vehicle. The comparatively shitter T-34 and M4 Sherman could be produced much faster due to simplicity of design. Look into the Moors tank project. That mother was German over engineering at its finest. The code that I wrote to manage whether or not a magazine is attached to the character's weapon. Most games just play an animation and your magazine magically reappears on the gun if the animation was interrupted somehow. But I wanted to support unloading the weapon as well so there has to be a state for where the magazine isn't attached. And now if you interrupt the reloading animation after you detach the magazine it will be in the unloaded state permanently detached. And omg it ended up getting really complicated somehow. If the character drops the magazine by dying while unloading. The magazine becomes a pickupable object that contains ammo for other characters and the gun has no ammo anymore. I'm also making sure the code is generic and supports non-magazine type objects. Like if you're reloading a shotgun or grenade launcher and putting individual shells in one at a time. You could literally drop a single shell mid reloading animation and that would become a pickupable shell for other characters. I can't go back now. It's almost done being coded. Programmer's Credo. We do these things not because they are easy, but because we thought they were going to be easy when we first started them. This may seem odd to some, but RMS Titanic. Bear in mind this was one of the biggest ships in the entire world at the time, and yet she was admired as being not only reasonably fast, but exceptionally maneuverable. In terms of survivability, you could chop her into three pieces and each piece would float on its own. She had a state-of-the-art automatic watertight door system and a full double bottom along the entire length of her hull. As a whole you could completely flood any two watertight compartments, or even the front three, and she'd stay afloat. What sort of collision could possibly pierce more than three compartments? Sadly we now know that the one in a million sideswipe along the iceberg, which did relatively little damage but spread it across six compartments, was all that could sink her. But even then, she didn't go down without a fight. She took three hours to sink, and did so on such an even keel that the crew were able to keep launching lifeboats right up to the point that they themselves were underwater. Had the ship started listing over, it would have been impossible to launch the lifeboats, and hundreds more may have perished. I'm not at all saying that the disaster wasn't exactly that, but it was the deathly out of date safety proceedings and standards of the time, as well as the poorly trained crew, that caused the deaths of so many people. Not a flaw in the ship itself. A lot of people like to spread rumors of her bad design or poor construction, but these are falsehoods, she was way ahead of her time. But no ship before or since has suffered the same damage with even a chance of staying afloat for more than a few minutes. This may be one of the most interesting comments I've ever read on reddit. Thanks for your knowledge. Friend of mine just bought a $65 Casper pillow thinking it was going to be the best pillow ever. Turned out just to be a pillow with an outer pillow surrounding it that you can clean and zip it back on to keep the inner pillow from getting dirty. He is also going to buy a Trigger 275 chair, which is like your normal office swivel chair, but with 275 parts. I do work in electronic repair. I'd have to say Sony Trinitron series CRT TVs and a ton of their earlier rear protection TVs had so many unnecessary engineering features. The fix for half of their failures was literally to unplug that section of the circuit. No joke. Literal service instructions from a tech rep. The most infamous failure was their zero point crossing circuit. A whole circuit dedicated to watching the AC line voltage wiggle and start up the rest of the TV the split second the AC village was at zero volts and on the rise. It had a massive failure rate and wouldn't allow the TV to turn on if it wasn't working. What did this circuit accomplish? Now your lights wouldn't always dim slightly when you turn it on. Sony rep said those TVs are what happened when Sony doesn't cap the engineering budget. I used to have a 27 inches. Goddamn thing weighed a ton. Probably 100 pounds or more. Had a good picture. Nice TV. Whenever I'm fixing some car stuff, 
Like the headlamp switch in an Audi, that thing is so over-engineered that it's supposed to work for decades but good luck trying to fix one that failed. Also, they usually fail because people try fixing upgrading stuff they don't understand by themselves. The major difference between a thing that might go wrong and a thing that cannot possibly go wrong is that when a thing that cannot possibly go wrong goes wrong it usually turns out to be impossible to get it or repair. Douglas Adams Gaming Mice I needed a replacement for mine several months back. After years of service, my G700 finally went belly up on me. So I went to Amazon to see what they had. Some of these things are freaking ridiculous. Weird butt shapes. An absurd number of poorly placed buttons. Lights for no god dang reason and the colors. Dear lord, the gaudy butt colors. In the end, I just said screw it and bought the same mouse again. No regrets. Just bought a silent mouse so I can game while my girlfriend is sleeping. Don't know why I said it but I'm so happy with it and have nowhere else to post it. I worked on an Omnimax projector. Think IMAX but projected onto a dome. Simply loading the film was a process that involved checklists and fiddly bits that were easy to mess up. To do any maintenance on it at all was an exercise in frustration. Okay so I worked as an avionics technician for the Air Force. JHMCS. Basically the helmets that the pilots wear. Because the targeting system needs to know where the pilot is looking you need some way to sense the movement as they turn their heads etc. You'd think this would be as simple as own gyros like in a VR headset right? Wrong, because the g-forces of the jet in flight would mess them all up. The entire cockpit of each individual aircraft has to be electromagnetically mapped. Basically they map every little electromagnetic field given off by every piece of metal, every electronic, all of it. And then to sum it all up the aircraft can tell where the helmet is facing by how those fields change when the helmet is moved. And that's just how the old helmets of Ron the 80s and 90s work. I don't even want to know what kind of BS goes into the F-35's JHMCS systems. The Internet of Things. Basically, you have all this technology that is struggling to justify its own existence. You can unlock your door with your phone, but you could also unlock it with a key. The key can't get hacked, the batteries won't die, the app won't get corrupted, it costs $2 to replace and it is probably actually quicker than unlocking your phone and getting the app launched. There are a million examples of products that think the future is being internet connected smart devices but the disadvantages almost always outweigh the advantages. Smart locks are incredibly useful for anyone who needs to be able to give and control access to their home. For Airbnb hosts this can be the difference between having to pay someone to be there to hand over keys and not. This reminds me of an old episode of Garfield that had an ad for an automatic battery changer that did nothing but change its own batteries. Working as advertised. Aftermarket radios for your car. Someone broke into my car and stole the radio. I replaced it with one I could afford. It had so many extra buttons that had no icons on them to tell you what they do. You had to read the very thick manual to discover that about 3 of those buttons only worked with special audio equipment that you wouldn't have installed in your car with such a cheap radio. The layout was a jumble. The volume wasn't a knob either, although it had one. It increased the bass or tempo. It would have to be a fairly nice piece of equipment to have a knob to increase the tempo. The house I rent has has a valve that will automatically shut down the gas and turn off the electricity if an earthquake is detected. Sounds great until you realize that I live in the UK and the last earthquake to cause any damage was in 1990 and our old chimney collapsed. On the other hand I the house is in the line of fire for flood. Doesn't quite fit the question but I found it very interesting that the Hoover Dam was massively over-engineered. Modern estimates put it at approximately 80% over-engineered, meaning it could stand completely sturdy for a long time with a fraction of the bulk of the current concrete. Microwave oven controls. All I want is for the thing to turn on a certain amount of time then shut off. I don't need 20 buttons to do that. Mine has a combo mode. I don't feel adventurous enough to press it. 1980s Volvos? I miss the days when cars were over-engineered. Even Volvo is just a brand name. Applied to Ford designed cars for a while and now owned by a Chinese company. Even modern Mercedes cars aren't anywhere near as well built as the 80s ones. I miss my first car. 
1983 Volvo 240 wagon. That thing was an unkillable beast. 280k miles on it and the only reason I got rid of it was I couldn't afford to fix the radiator. But any time a light went on it was $30 in parts and $900 in labor because of the design. Most flashlights these days. No. I do not need 3 different brightness settings. No. I do not need a red light. No. I do not need a green light. And for god's sake I do not need strobe. You know what I need. A dang flashlight that turns off and on. Sob 9000 from Miley 90s with the large AC had so many buttons, lights and sensors that it was a nightmare for the owner. There was air flaps everywhere and each had a sensor. MB600. Pullman. Almost everything was hydraulic. Even the side windows. Aston Martin La Gonda. The instrumentation was crazy complicated. Early models had 3 CRTs. And buttons. Switches and meters everywhere. Give Toyota Supra, 320 HP and about that in torque, great car, but they decided that putting in a clutch that reliably transfers closer to 700 pounds of torque was cool. They also put in a transmission that can move about 800 horses without much risk. The engine block unmodified will tolerate about 3 times its designed load and do it with Toyota reliability. When I was a Supra guy I had multiple friends with about 6 700 HP at the wheels, assume about a 15% transmission loss, and driving them to work on a daily basis. They never could figure out how to turn a profit on that car for some reason. Roman Aqueducts they outlived their design spec lifespan by close to 2k years, even completely lacking intended ongoing maintenance. Over-engineering refers to something that has been designed in a ridiculously complicated way when something far simpler would work. The Roman aqueducts were not over-engineered, they were extremely well engineered. iPhone X gets unlocked by recognizing your face. Not only is it a waste of technology, power and resources, but compared with simple fingerprint scanning, it's just pointless. Problem is, they wanted to get rid of the home button and was not able to put a touch ID sensor under the display. They could simply have put the sensor on the back like some Android devices, but that's not Apple's way of doing crap. LNERW1. High pressure. 450C. Boiler built by a ship company. It had such an odd shape it was nicknamed the Galloping Sausage. It was rebuilt after being deemed unsuccessful as an A4, but with an extra wheel on the back, giving it a larger cab. Making ovens digital was stupid and it's causing hardship. An analog oven had two dials, time and temperature. WTF was wrong with that, user friendly as frick that was. Now I have to read a fricking manual to navigate a user menu just to turn a new oven on. It the frequently confused difference between over designed and over engineered. Super complicated cuff holder that is always broken versus a cuff holder which is the only part to survive the vehicle being hit by a direct meter or impact. The turbo cabulator. They could have easily prevented the side fumbling by fitting four hydrocoptic Mars levanes to the amber patient lunar wana shaft. 6 was just excessive. On top of that the main winding was Lotus O Delta type, in freaking semi bovoid slots in the stator. There was nothing wrong with using Lotus O Beta windings in fully bovoid slots, and anybody with half a brain can see that this was done as nothing more than a lackluster effort to drive up the price margins with fancy looking data sheets. And don't even freaking get me started on connecting every 7th conductor to the differential Joda spring on the up end of the grammeters using a dang non-reversible tremie pipe. What were they thinking? The whole thing is just an outdated joke. This one goes back in time a bit, but the TI-99 stroke 4A PEB, the PEB, peripheral expansion box, is the expansion unit that plugs into the TI-99 stroke 4A computer and lets it use a disk controller, more memory, serial controller, and other options and peripherals. Now, the TI-99 stroke 4A itself is a cheesy, flimsy, toy-like home computer. It's made of cheap plastic, has a huge external power brick, has almost no expandability to speak of, and a very limited keyboard. Backspace is a shifted character. It's so cheap they didn't even do anything special for the joystick inputs. They are treated as part of the keyboard matrix. The thing is cheesier than a Commodore 64. 
They didn't even label the ports on the back of the thing. Every corner was cut in the production of this computer. The PEB though. The PEB weighs as much as an IBM PCXT, and it's about as big too. Huge heavy metal casing with a giant linear power transformer. Each of the peripheral cards is encased in a cast aluminum cartridge bigger than a videotape. The cable that connects this monstrosity to the computer is a giant, thick, shielded, rubber coated ribbon cable that resembles a flattened fire hose. The connector that plugs it into the side of the computer is so big and heavy it has to have a little foot on it to support it on the table so it doesn't damage the port from its weight. The PEB is shielded far, far, far better than the computer is. I mean, cost aluminum circuit board housings? Seriously? Who thought that up? The contrast is just stunning. This huge, heavy, beast of an expansion module, plugged into this light, flimsy, plastic toy of a computer. There's no way it was cheap to build. The expansion box was far more expensive than the computer, and nobody bought them. The only reason they're fairly common now is because TI realized they'd created a flop of a product and dropped the price way down to move them and the associated computers, since nobody was buying them. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.